Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the e-commerce series using Django. In this one, we will get started working with the user dashboard. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor and I will open up the user admin views by. And you can see that I already have a couple of things imported over here. I have date time. I have from Django.shortcuts and every other thing that we have here. So you can pretty much pause the video and import all those packages that we will be using. And after you are done, let's firstly define a new view called dashboard. So I'll call this one dashboard. And what we pretty much want to pass in this one is requests. And we need a, we need a couple of takes for this. Firstly, revenue is something that we want to get. So I'll say cut order dot objects dot and this one we want to aggregate and what do we want to say define a variable price and pretty much sum up all the prices that exist in the cart order this is how we get the total revenue that this user has made okay or that owner of the store has made then we also need the total amount of items that has been ordered so i'll say total orders underscore counts should be equal to cut order dot objects dot all all right and we need all products so all products should be equal to products dot objects dot all and we also need all category so all categories should be equal to category dot objects dot all and we also need all the new customers so i'll say new underscore new underscore customers should be equal to user dot object dot all and let's order by dot order order by oldest to newest or rather newest to oldest okay that's how we get the new customers and also i need the latest orders so latest orders should be equal to cut order dot objects dot all. All right, and finally, let's get count the monthly revenue. For this, I'll firstly define a variable called this month. That's to get the current month we are in, and that should be date time dot dates time dot now, and grab the month from it. Okay, so that's to get the correct points and the monthly revenue. So the monthly revenue should be equal to cut order dot object dot filter by order underscore date underscore underscore month should be equal to this month. And we need to aggregate and pretty much sum up the price again. So we want to sum up all the prices that we have in that field or in that model. So sum up all the price field together. All right, that is pretty much it. Now create a context and you need to pass in all this, that we have all this into the context. Um, let me take this quickly and bring it down here. And also take this and bring it down here. So remember how we added cursor to the back of everything and copy this. Firstly, this one here is the key, just so you know. This first one should be the key. It will be in a string. And then this one here will be the value, add a comma. So that's it. You can see we pretty much added all this that we created in a context dictionary. You could pause the video and actually type all this out if you can't follow up with the shortcuts. Remember, if you want to add a cursor to the back of everything, hold down alternate and click one by one or hold down control alternate and use your arrow key, down arrow key. OK, and also if you want to add an arrow to the front of everything, highlight the text that you want to add an arrow to its front and pretty much hit shift alternate I. You see, there is now um, an, a cursor at the front of everything. OK. And after you've done all this, finally return render requests. And what is going to be the name of the dashboard? Let's say user admin slash dashboard 
HTML. That's the name of the template. And finally, we pass the context. So then in the user admin, create a new urls.py file and import from django.urls, import part. And also from user admin, import views. And also set the app name to be user admin. And also set the URL patterns to be part. And as soon as you come over to the dashboard, we want to get that page. And it's called views.dashboard. And also the name is dashboard. We are done. Open up your main project URLs py and make sure to register user admin like this if you haven't done that already. Okay, so hopefully you register it like this and that's it, we are done. So right now we'll try opening this up. Let me run my server again. Python manage py run server. There you go, my server is running. Let me open this up. Okay, see, this is what we have. Now, under here in accounts, I want to click on this admin dashboard and actually go here. See, it's working. Now, what I want to do is create this new template. So, take dashboard or HTML, come over to the templates folder. In, in here, user, user admin, let me look for that, hold on. This is core, this is partial, this is user odds. Okay, I think we don't have user admin yet. So let's create a new one for user admin. Create a new user admin slash then dashboard HTML. So it creates the new folder and then the template. But we still seem to be getting an issue. So what is going on here? Are you sure we are in the right place? Hold on, let me see. Templates. Um, let me let me look at my views py to see what we have there. So we have user admin slash dashboard HTML. Let me just confirm if that is the same thing we have over here. There you go. But why is it not actually getting the templates? We've created it. I will break up from my server and run it again, just in case things haven't actually synced well as expected. Oh, there you go. See, it wasn't synced well. Now there you go. Everything is working well. So I already have this template set up for you guys. The raw templates doesn't have any Django code in it. Just open up front end templates, open up dashboard and take dashboard HTML and pretty much put it in your own empty dashboard user admin. So after adding it in, you can see that this is what we have here. It doesn't really look good. So we need to fix up a couple of things and actually, you know, bring things together and make it look good as expected. So what do we do? The very first thing that we want to do is in the user admin folder, create a new file called base HTML. And if you look at the templates that I provided, you will see one called base HTML. Take all the code in there and pretty much put it to your own empty base HTML. And that is just the sidebar and the CSS files and everything that we will be needing, right? So after you've put that in, then you want to create a block content in your in your dashboard, wrap your whole code in the block content. And you also want to extend from that user admin slash base.html. And finally, you want to load static. Save your code. And when you reload this page now, see, this is what we have looking good, right? So let's start changing up all the informations that we have here. Starting from the revenue to the orders to the products to the monthly earning and all that. So um, the very first one on our list here is revenue. The dashboard, open this up and revenue. Instead of $100, what you need to put here is revenue dot price. And we need to, okay, for now, let's just reload this. This should be price. Now this revenue here, this revenue keyword here, is pretty much this one here. And that price is this price here. See this price variable? That is what we are calling. So let's see. Okay, can you see 202.8333330? That is what we have. To fix that, you could just put a float format. So float 
formats and you could say two or zero or depending on whatever you want why i need to so you see this now looks good for the others that one will be let me get back here total orders count and that is what i need here instead of 16 total orders count dot count and now two others products should be all products dot count so all products dot count and finally monthly earning should be monthly revenue dot price so over here monthly revenue dot price still add the float formats so i'll take this and i'll add the float formats here and reload we should still see the 202 because i made this sales in this month all right so the top bar is completed now let's work with listing of the orders so um for that one depending on how you want to you want to if you want to go from latest to oldest order it's totally up to you how you want to do that but this is what i want to do in the um let me check this out this is latest order you can even still call this all orders so let's just take that mm. Let's make this paid status to be true. So I'll say paid underscore status should be true. Now this one totally depends on what you want. If you want to filter all the orders for the for the admin based on the one that is even paid and not paid, then you could get rid of this. Okay. But if you want to filter only the one that's paid, you could pass in paid status is true. So this one totally depends on how you want this to be. All right. Now in the dashboard to loop true, just above the TR. I'll create a new for loop and say for L in latest order and I'll wrap the whole TR with that and fix my indentation. So with this now, you can see, seems I wrapped the wrong one. Yeah, I should have wrapped the wrong one. I was supposed to actually wrap this one here, this other TR down here. Then you can see now that we should have two orders. See, two orders. Now let's start changing up the information. This here should be the school. So I could just say, um, I'll say L dot school. Okay, let me remove this. Also, let me remove this. See, the school is showing up. For the billing information, that one will be L dot full name for the date that one will be L dot date unless if you don't want to filter the date it's up to you how you want to do it um that should be L dot order date please do not miss that see other date and if you want you could even add things like the email and the phone number here too you could say um instead of billing name you could remove all the billing and this this here could be email so we have other id we have name we have email we have phone we have date total payment status and all this so other full name other email other phone let's see see that's how it's looking now for the total that should be order dot price all right, and for the paid status, that should be order dot paid underscore status. But for this one, I actually would want to see it doesn't show anything. So what we could do here is just write a conditional statement and say if l dot paid underscore status is equal, if it's equal to true, then we want this to show paid. Else, if it's not equal to true, then we want to show not paid or pretty much anything that you want to show. So over here, if it's paid, I want to show paid. If it's not paid, I want to show not paid. See, paid, paid. All right, that is working. And if it's not paid, I want to make it to be danger. 
So for now, I believe that is everything that we will be needing. In the next video, we can get started working with maybe the other details so we can view the details of an order or maybe something totally different. In the next video, let's start working with maybe the other detail. I think that will make more sense. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you want to set up a real e-commerce store, send a message to deskfix.gmail.com and we will set up a real professional e-commerce store for your business. And trust me, you'll be really impressed with it. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, much love. Peace out.